Controlling access to resources based on roles within your organization is vital. Fortunately, Docker EE has you covered with sophisticated role-based access control. So let's assume a scenario like this. You've got an ops team that's responsible for administering your environment, and you've got a bunch of dev teams delivering value. So the .NET team here is using Swarm, and as an example, you want to restrict them to running work on a subset of nodes in the cluster. Cool. Same goes for the Java dev team here. Swarm apps again, but restricted to running on a different set of nodes. And then same again for this Java team here, only they're delivering Kubernetes apps. Now beneath all of this from an infrastructure perspective, we've got a single Docker EE cluster running a heterogeneous mix of Windows and Linux nodes. And it can be anywhere, yeah? On-prem, in the cloud, even hybrid clouds. But having a single cluster means a single point of management for the ops team. Anyway, access control in Docker EE isn't just about who can schedule work to which nodes. We can really get granular. So we can say things like the .NET team here, maybe they can start new containers and services, but they can't stop them or delete them. Or maybe they can create new secrets but not delete them. You can pretty much allow or disallow any Docker or Kubernetes API operation. Great, so let's have a look. This is Docker EE, and the dashboard view gives us a snapshot of what's going on. Nodes, swarms, Kubernetes, all the big picture stuff. Anyway, RBAC is based on the idea of a grant, and the easiest way is just to look at one. Uh, yeah, this one. So we can see that we've got the .NET Swarm team with the ability to schedule new work on any node in the ENV Retail Bank Dev resource set. Well, I think we'll create a new one. But first up, let's create a new role. This is where we customize things and get really granular. We'll call this one Kubernetes Deployment View. And then under Operations here, this is the granular bit. And it's Swarm and Kubernetes, yeah? Well, we want Kubernetes. And I'm looking to create a role that lets us view deployments. So I think we'll have Get and List. And Watch as well. Why not? but only for Kubernetes deployments, right? And that's a custom role. Anyway, let's piece it together in a grant. So a grant's three things, yeah? For the subject, you know what? I think we'll have the entire retail bank organization. So that'll include all of these teams here within the organization. Then we'll give them that custom role that we just created. And I think we'll say you can have those permissions on anything here in the Retail Bank namespace. Okay. And there it is, right? Anyone in the Retail Bank organization gets that custom view deployments role for all deployments in the Retail Bank Kubernetes namespace. Let's test it. But first up, we want to know how many Kubernetes namespaces we've actually got. And I make that five. And then deployments, okay? I'm seeing all five namespaces, remember? So in total, we've got six deployments. And we'll put those numbers up here. Now then, this is my user account here. And I'm a member of the .NET Swarm team, which is in the Retail Bank organization. So... If we sign out as admin, and then in as me, okay, well, right off the bat, my context is set to the retail bank namespace, and I can only see three deployments. That's down from six that we could see as admin. So the three that are missing must be in another namespace that I don't have access to. Also, right, under Kubernetes namespaces here, Okay, only one this time. Remember, there's actually five, but my user account, as per the grant we created, only sees a limited set of namespaces. And then we can only see the deployments that are in that namespace. So just a simple example there of access control with Docker Enterprise Edition. But we can see that it works with Kubernetes and we can get really granular with it. To try out Docker Enterprise Edition for yourself, head over to trial.docker.com.